Not sure if I've mentioned this on the channel or not, but I love drawing flowers. <laughs> Florals are a great subject matter, but sometimes designing and placing them together can be tricky, and that's what we're talking about today. Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Shada, and I am super excited to talk floral layout and design with you today. Just a quick reminder that if you would like to print my illustration from today's video, all the channel bonus content is available on Patreon. This particular one would make a good goals page for a planner, so go check it out. So I'm starting today in my bullet journal. I do a lot of flowers in my journal, and anytime I draw flowers, I want to have a guide. So here I'm starting with a large circle and that represents a large flower that kind of anchors everything. Then we might do two or three medium sized circles. Those will be medium sized flowers. And then a few leaves can always look nice. Leaves sort of frame the flowers really well. And then we'll do some smaller flowers. We'll just put little circles and these lines I'm drawing, I call sprays and they just represent sprays of little leaves or little flowers. So we've got a big circle, some medium sized circles, some smaller circles, and then some large leaves and some small sprays. And that's the basic setup for my floral design. Anytime I'm doing an illustration, I want to begin with a guide. It just sets you up for success. So now in pencil still, I want to start drawing the flowers. What types of flowers am I going to include in this illustration? I'll do sort of an, a poppy in the center and maybe some roses. Um, a lot of them I'm just going to do simple, like four petal flowers. That's totally fine. They don't have to be complex. Uh, a little swirl for a rose maybe. And then we can start to draw in some tiny leaves and maybe some little berries those sprays around the edge, those can be small flowers uh, like lavender or little berries. With my pencil guide complete, I'm gonna grab a Pigma Micron and I'll start going over the flowers. So I think right away you can see how you really set yourself up for success. First by laying the piece out, where's the large flower going? Then there's gonna be these other flowers bordering those larger flowers. Then we start drawing the flowers in, still working in pencil. And then when you're really confident with your design and only then do you start going over it in pen. And this is just for beginners. This is still how I do most of my floral layouts. I, I just don't want to be always ripping pages out of my journal. So I am drawing in the rows and of course you'll see me adding extra details at this point. My pencil sketch was um, pretty basic but I at least sort of have my guide there and I know what I want to achieve when I start working in pen. Some of the flowers are quite detailed, others are really simple. You can see that little rose is just a swirl. Some of the small ones are just very simple, four petal little uh, blooms. I'm going to go over the leaves and add a little more. You know, I sort of wiggle the pen so that the lines aren't too smooth or too straight. I want the leaves to look a little bit textured. And uh, as the piece comes together, I sort of take a step back and look, where do I need another leaf? Where do I need some more tiny little berries? And it's never too late to, you know, erase and keep um, doing the design in pencil. Sometimes when I'm about halfway through the design, I'll think, oh, I need to rework that section. So take a step back, really look at it, decide um, what you want to achieve. And I just decided I need those berries to be a little bigger and a little closer to the rest of the flowers. And you can see a, a great way to be successful at this is you start with that large flower. It is framed or bordered by medium sized flowers. And then those flowers flowers are framed or bordered by smaller tiny flowers and little leaves and berries. So we sort of work out from center getting smaller and more detailed. Speaking of detail, I'm going to take another pen, a smaller nib, and at this point, now that I've done the contour drawing, I want to start adding some line shading and also some, some real contrast because it looks pretty the way it is now, but I think it needs some more depth and I definitely think it needs more contrast, meaning it's very white, we need more dark uh, areas so that everything kind of pops. So you can see here what I'm doing is coloring in some of the leaves. I'm adding little line shading on some of the flower petals. 
And then some of the leaves I'll color in half of, of each of them to give me that nice contrast so that by the time I'm done, I've got this really nice black and white image um, that's high contrast and the flowers really pop. A lot of times what I do is the flowers will be lighter, a lot of white negative space, and then the leaves will be darker, a lot more line shading. I'm doing some veining on these large leaves and then um, a nice trick that I like to really make the leaves come to life is to just use that smaller nib pen to shade in one side of each leaf. And I'm just doing these very, very perfectly imperfect, sketchy, broken lines. And I think that gives a nice um, bit of depth and shadow and contrast to those leaves. Okay, here is my floral motif or my design all done. I'm really happy with it. And what I want to do now is quickly add a little border. Um, I don't know what you are doing in your journal this month, but I always seem to need a goals page and these pretty bordered uh, images make a great space for writing down all my goals and affirmations and stuff like that. So that's probably what I'll use this for. Um, and I am doing, okay, watch this. I'm doing a very perfectly imperfect line here. Usually I say, drag that pen towards your body. It's gonna be really straight. You'll get a pretty straight line. Mine went majorly wavy there, but it's a good lesson in just go with it. All I did was mirror that wave in the second line and you're totally not gonna notice it when you're, I'm done. Or if you do notice it, it just gives that perfectly imperfect charm that I'm all about. So now I'm just making sure those lines, um, you know, all connect. If you can see them below the flowers there, I might wanna add a few more tiny little berries. And then what I wanna do here is simply uh, do some small lines and sort of shade in this border. And I think that just adds to the illustrative perfectly imperfect quality of this uh, page <laughs> have I said perfectly imperfect enough <laughs> All right, I'm gonna grab my pencil and we're just gonna do another example so that you can see that this technique or this formula will really work in any project that you might have. This time I'm starting with an oval on the page and then I'm using that same formula of the large circles, the medium sized circles bordering them, then the smaller ones, and then some of those sprays or wisps of small leaves and berries. And then of course you can tuck leaves in wherever you need one. Then you start drawing in the flowers, which one's going to be a rose, which one's going to be a daisy, maybe you want to put some anemones in there, um, and it comes together quite nicely. And then of course you're at the point where you can start going over it in pen and feel confident in your design. Let's do one more because those were both borders. What if you want to do a large floral piece that's just of that, just the florals, no border, no wreath. Uh, again, I'm starting with my large circle, then I've got my medium sized flowers. This one takes a little more thought, but I'm sort of tucking leaves in, then some smaller circles, maybe another medium sized one, maybe some leaves. Of course, you're working in pencil, so if you, you know, decide oh, that doesn't really fit there, you can change it. Now I'm starting to figure out, I wanna do the center flower um, as an anemone, and I'm gonna do some roses along the bottom here. And then I sort of stepped back, I was like, wait, I have all roses on the bottom and like a, sort of like a poppy flower up above, so it looks kind of unbalanced. So I changed one of those. And then of course I want to just, um, start going over everything in pen once I'm happy with that design. And you can see I'm doing roses and poppies and a big anemone. anemone. <laughs> if you are interested in floral illustration, I have lots of tutorials and I will link uh, the anemones and the poppies, all the ones I have in the description below. Now I am just filling in. I do find that some of these larger floral motifs that are sort of center page, they really benefit from bursts of small leaves. And you can see I've got lots of little leaves kind of uh, framing some of those medium sized flowers. But that's how this one came together. And at this point, you can always trace it. If you're not quite happy with it, because sometimes these get away from you and you're not sure where you went wrong, just 
just grab a piece of tracing paper. You can move things around. Say you want this to be a bit bigger. You can make that rose larger and you can rework the design. And then of course, you can use the tracing paper to transfer it to watercolor paper and do a painting. Well, I'm done with that one for now. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As you know, I love working with florals. Don't forget you can grab uh, my illustration over on Patreon, so go check that out. And I will see you soon with a new video.